Okay, that side balanced out a little bit. Good. Good to see you back, Chuck, Charles, and Ying. Good to have you back. We miss you. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning. Lord, it is a good morning. It's a beautiful morning. We thank you that we have such a temperate climate and such a, a wonderful um, way of enjoying it. And Lord, we um, ask that in our being here, or in our coming here, that we be here, that we be present, Lord, so that we can tap into uh, you, to hear from you, to experience you in just every day, in just an everyday kind of a way. And so, Lord, would you bless your people as we continue forward. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a, a good song to open with and stand for if you're inclined. Ancient of Days. Honor, glory, and power be unto the Ancient of Days. Every nation, all of creation, I'll be for the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship, you will be exalted, O oh God. Your king, your kingdom shall not pass away, O oh ancient of days. Let's sing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, bow at your throne. Worship, you will be exalted, O God. Your kingdom, kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Shall declare your glory at your throne. Kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancients of days. None can compare to your matchless worth. Sing unto the ancients of days. Kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. None can compare to your matchless worth. Sing unto the ancient of days. Over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of 
day. But none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing to the ancient day. Jacob shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient day. None can compare to your matchless worth. Sing to the ancient they sang amen this is from revelation 7 9 blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our god forever and ever i think this would be the angels singing this We are a moment, you are forever. Lord of the ages, God before time. We are a vapor, you are eternal. Love everlasting, reigning on high. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. By its praise, its honor and glory be unto your name. Be unto your name are the broken you are the healer jesus redeemer mighty to save you are the love song we'll sing forever Walking before you Let's sing your name. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. I use praise, His honor and glory be unto your name. Be unto your name. Holy, Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb who was I praise His honor and glory be unto your name, be unto your name. Be unto your name. Whoa, what was that? I don't think I did that. No? How great thou art then. Okay. Consider all the world 
holds a hand to me. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art, Lord, as we proceed, would you just bless the time? And we ask God that um, we can always be adaptable and uh, flex with what you bring our way. And I ask God that our, our congregation would be as well. Thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. A day in the life. That's what I'm calling this message. It's had a few different titles, but I'll settle on this one. A day in the life. And for those of us who are on um, the men's thread, we're accustomed to seeing a day in the life of Ted. <laughs> How about you gals? Any of you familiar with that? Ted will send us comical, humorous, faux pas that he uh, en encounters, things that, things that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that one. <laughs> yeah, and so the guys get some kind of fun humor out of that. And so I'm going to plagiarize this idea of a day in the life because Nancy and I have a little story to tell. And uh, that's really going to be a, a big piece of what we're doing today. And it occurred to me, while I'm doing this, I always feel like, well, what is the scripture? Where am I going to, where am I going to weave that in? And, and you'll notice that Jesus doesn't often use scripture. He tells stories, relatable stories that people can follow along with. And this will be a bit on, on the order of that. Now, Having put this up here and introduced it, I want to encourage any of you who have a day in the life kind of a uh, situation and would like to share it, I, you know, just let me know. Because uh, the whole idea here is to engage one another. Um, and, and am I too formal? Would anyone accuse me of being too formal <laughs> besides my wife? <laughs> okay. I didn't think so either. 
A day in the life. Here's a passage. Pay to all who what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. And honor to whom honor is owed. And we've had that in our worship uh, lineup this morning. The idea of glory and honor, uh, power and praise to uh, the ancient of days and so forth. Um, and so, has anyone ever seen this book, America's God and Country? It's really a great book of quotes going all the way back to our founding fathers and and continuing on. And I've, I haven't been through all of it, but I've made notes of some of the um, quotes that are in here. And I'm tapping into that. And so we're going to start out with a little bit of a of, of some history in quotes. So if you ever run into someone who says, you know, our, our country really doesn't have a Christian roots, um, if you have this book, you can say, well, let's take a look at this or let's take a look at that. Now, you do have to recognize that it wasn't all monolithic. It wasn't everybody believing that this should be a Christian nation. And it wasn't even that all of the denominations would agree. There's a great quote on that one. Won't be using it today for this. But I'm making a case today for frugality, for self-control and a diligent work ethic. <laughs> I was cast in that mode, and I can't shake it, and I don't really want to, but anything can be taken to a fault. And so we're going to look at that, that aspect of it and um, try to... Try to hold on to your own thoughts because uh, I'd like to hear how you sum it up. I don't have a real clear summary for this. And, and so rather than spoon feed everything to you, I welcome your participation. And, and, and I'll even ask you, well, how would you sum all this up? But that'll be later. So we're going to make, uh, using these quotes, a case for frugality. You know what that word is, right? For being frugal. Self-control, the word that's used in the quote is temperance, which can relate to alcohol, which I don't think is the key point there, but self-control. And um, industry is the word that's used, and I'm translating that as a diligent work ethic. And so, first of all, we'll go with, uh, we're going to look at two of our uh, famous people, founding fathers, and here's a case for frugality and a diligent work ethic from two of our founding fathers, one of them being Benjamin Franklin and the other being John Adams. And when you read, a jo I, see, I'm not sure that Benjamin Franklin was altogether a Christian. Just from things I've, I read in his quotes, I don't really think he is. Um, John, what's that? Yeah, there's a, uh, it, it could be, false information. I, I wanted to check on it and said it wasn't true, but, you know, sources all vary. Uh, the, what I had heard at the time was that he died of syphilis. That's very unglorifying, isn't it? Anyway, John Adams, John Adams is really stunning when you read uh, the things that he wrote. His father was a deacon. Uh, in they were uh, the Puritans that came over. His father was a deacon. His father wanted him to go into the ministry, but instead, at age 16, he attended Harvard. And so, one thing I gather from these from these readings is these guys were brilliant. They didn't. They they were all over um, their learning and so forth. So John Adams. We'll begin with. Ben Franklin, he was active in Pennsylvania politics and worked as an ambassador for America. He served as a sixth president of Pennsylvania, not America, from 1785 to 1788, and then retired from public life due to his ailing health. Well, here's the quote I'm taking from Ben Franklin. He says, the way to wealth is as plain as the way to market. What's that mean? I, I think doing business. It depends chiefly on two words. What are they? Industry and frugality. Hard work and frugality. Industry and frugality. That is, and I love this, waste neither time nor money, but make the best use of both. I love that because that's where I come from. 
That doesn't mean I'm good at it. But I, these are high values for me. Without industry and frugality, nothing will do, and with them, everything. We go on to John Adams here, who said, well, who is, John Adams was the founding father, the first vice president of the United States, and the second president. His son, John Quincy Adams, was the nation's sixth president, if my recollection is correct. He encouraged um, Thomas Jefferson to put together the uh, Declaration of Independence. He nominated or suggested that George Washington should be named uh, commander-in-chief. And so we have a, a quite a, a, a stalwart founding father in John Adams. And here is a letter to Thomas Jefferson. Now, they were quite adversarial between their, themselves until later in life, they became close friends. It said that John Adams left town when it was Jefferson's inauguration. He didn't want to be there. Uh, but they became close friends later in life. I think it was an iron sharpening iron kind of a thing. And it was 50 years after the Declaration of Independence, they both died on the same day. Adams a little later, and he said, thank God Jefferson lives. Wow. That's good stuff, isn't it? even though we don't agree on things. Thank God he lives. Do you know if we were a little more like that instead of everybody has to be in lockstep and think the way we think and do the way we do? I think we would be a lot richer for it. And so, he says to, in this letter, have you ever, this is, this is an indictment against America. This is an indictment against the America that we've become. Have you ever found in history a single example of a nation that was thoroughly corrupted, that was afterwards restored to virtue? Have you ever seen somebody go all the way down and come back? Rome didn't. Babylon didn't. You know, if it started with any virtue. And without virtue, there can be no political liberty. There won't be any free exercise of thinking in the political realm that's for the good of the people. Will you tell me, Thomas, how to prevent riches from becoming the effects of temperance and industry. He's saying you can't have self-control and hard work. Um, how do you help me with this? Will you tell me how to prevent riches? It, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a backward statement, isn't it? Riches will flow from that. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit convoluted in the way it's expressed, but they talk different in those days. And so he has another question for Thomas Jefferson. He says, will you tell me how to prevent luxury from producing effeminacy? Isn't that interesting? Effeminacy, intoxication, extravagance, vice, and folly. I believe no effort in favor of virtue is lost. Now, that's a, clo a quote from his letter to Thomas Jefferson. He was also an avid journal keeper, diary. He wrote, this next one is from his diary, dated February 22nd, 1786, where he wrote, suppose a nation, he, he's imagining, just suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book, and every member should regulate his conduct by the, prince, by the precepts there exhibited. Everybody lived accordingly. Every member would be obliged in conscience to temperance, frugality, in industry, there's those, that concept being repeated. Suppose a nation in some distant region should take, okay, I read that, every, oh, all right, let's do it this way. From his diary continued that it would be dedicated to justice, kindness, and charity towards his fellow man, and to piety, love, and reverence toward Almighty God. This is where he's coming from. And then he says, what a utopia. What a paradise would this imaginary region be? This is his idea of the nation that they were founding. This is what I imagine, and if it could be possible. And if we don't fall victim to all the vices of wealth and prosperity, we have a chance if we hang on to virtue. So we're looking at a day in the life. It's Tuesday morning, just last week. I had doctor's appointments last week. And so something came up on Tuesday morning I was, wasn't real happy about because it was going to take me, take me away another day. 
It's Tuesday morning. And so I'll start this story out. This is our a day in the life. And so I started out this way. It's Tuesday morning, and I've gone to San Juan Batista to meet with my good longtime friend, Doug, who normally comes here, but I wanted to spare him the trip from time to time when I can. So we went over to Vertigo. We have coffee, but mainly we just talk. And um, so uh, when I leave, I'm noticing that my gas gauge, I never let it run empty, but it's getting down in that area. And I'm thinking, you know, I better make sure I gas up. And so I swing by that Valero there in San Juan Batista, and the price is five oh nine a gallon. And I'm thinking, I gassed up here not long ago for way less than that. I don't like this. This bothers me. Five oh nine a gallon. So I'm being penny wise, right? I'm being frugal. It's only a few miles. I have no. I'm going to make it. No problem. I'll get gas in aromas. We've had little axioms or adages throughout our life. How about this one? A penny saved is a penny earned. You saved it. You earned it. Spending is quick, earning is slow. If you buy what you don't need, you steal from yourself. Yeah, and if you don't return what you're not going to use, you're robbing yourself again. The borrow is slave to the lender. The other ones up on top are secular. They might look like, they might be from Poor Richard's Almanac and from other sources, like that was a contribution of Ben Franklin. The borrow is a slave to the lender. So what's this talking about? Top, top word, top phrase there, being penny-wise. Penny-wise, and that is, of course, always accompanied by another uh, piece of the phrase. But penny-wise, I want to say, is about being frugal. It's about being frugal. Now, one time someone commented that I was cheap. <laughs> and I said, you know, I really prefer the word frugal. And so I want to just look at these. Um, being frugal means buying off-brand items. Yeah, I do that. I like the generics. Uh, being cheap means not leaving a tip. Which reminds me, that's why I drove over to, to San Juan Batista to meet Doug, so that he's not always driving here. It takes him an hour to get from Hollister now that the traffic is what it is. Um, being frugal is thrift store shopping. Uh, whoops, I love thrift stores. Uh, uh, and, and dumpsters. And uh, recycle drop-off events. <laughs> thrift store shopping. Um, being cheap is avoiding paying when it's your turn. I slip off to the bathroom while the bill is coming. Using coupons. Now here's being frugal. Using coupons and searching for deals. Being cheap, only focused on short-term savings. Frugal, keeping old technology until it dies. Have you seen my vehicle? Being cheap, relying on free rides. Frugal, drinking at home versus at bars. Cheap, skimping on essentials like hygiene products. You don't even bathe. Frugal is valuing your time, and being cheap is take all free stuff, even if you don't plan to use it. Are you all on the frugal side, or are you lapsed back and forth? I, I, I see some things on the cheap side. I don't really uh, think, now that I see it, I don't really like it. So, this was my reasoning for not buying gas in San Juan, in, in San Juan Batista. So, I come home. I'm going to pick up my computer and what I need when I come down here. And you've all seen this before, haven't you? That kind of a thing? Well, I saw this kind of thing as I was coming up my driveway. It was coming down. And I'm thinking, what the heck? I was, this was befuddling because it's still early in the morning. Uh, this is befuddling. Why in the world would there be a, a, a car carrier, uh, a rollback unit, Carrying a car down my driveway that's the same color as Nancy's car. It's about the same size. But you know, I've never seen it from this angle before. <laughs> and But I'm befuddled, and I'm thinking, well, who might have gone up there? Because I couldn't see the, the emblem on the that told me it was a Subaru. Who might have gone up to our house this early and then needed to have a tow truck to get out of there? It, it scrambled my brain. You ask, was it the left or the right side? It was neither. It made no sense to me. 
So, again, it's Tuesday morning. Nancy is going to uh, tell you part of this, and, and she was at home, and I'll put this up there. Nancy says, hi-ho, hi-ho, off to work I go. All right, just another day, another day. And I'll follow it with this. Not so fast, sister. Come on up, Nancy. Lifting of my heart be the mountain where I lie, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. I'll pause right there. The relevance of that comes from what I said last week where we played the song fully. The relevance of it is that we have to uh, take charge of our emotions. We have to be responsible because Nancy has a bit of a, a story to tell here. It's Tuesday morning. The day is still young, just a simple change of plans. She's going to talk about that right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to do a little preface, too, because, you know, I was stepping out a little bit in, in the spiritual realm and standing firm against the enemy a little bit, you know, not a little bit. I was being kind of forceful, especially with some of my clients that were struggling with certain spiritual issues and just reminding them get thee behind me, right? It's just, you know, I don't mean to make it simple, but that really is what it's about. We focus on the Lord and let the enemy do what it wants to do. And we know where we're going. We know who our source and resource is. So I was getting ready to go that morning, and I just, you know, kind of in the, in the back here is a little bit of a, I can't explain it, just this awareness. And, um, and I've got, we've got a new little, little member of the family, and I'm getting ready, and he's gone already, and I've got Abby with me, and I've got to get down here, and Cher wasn't here, and I've got to get to the, um, the mailbox and uh, get the deposit done. So Cheryl has that because she was going to bring it this week, and then I had clients after that. So everything had to kind of follow in step. Get in the car. I start my car. And every light that can go on and every warning that could go on is going on. And what the heck? This is a new car. And I started to panic. See, I, and, and that's where my default can be, can go. I can get anxious really, really easily. So I, that, you know, that kind of went up to a five. And your anxiety, my anxiety went up, went up to about a five. Shut the car down, like a computer. I'm thinking, Rebooted. we need to reboot. Do it again. This time I've got smoke coming out the back of the of the vehicle. And it whistles and bells, and it's doing the same thing. And I'm thinking, oh, boy. So now I'm at a six, working on a seven. So I really had to take stock, and what, did, what do I do? I call Kevin. He doesn't answer. He texts him. Yeah. So... Um, <clears throat> Okay, what next? I call Subaru, and I get this wonderful gal, Cindy, on the line, who I still need to send a card to. And she, you know, we kind of go through the steps together, and I'm telling her exactly what happened, and she says, you need to bring it in. I'm sorry. Don't drive it. It's got to be towed. Now what? And then I realize the person I had gotten the car from had the full package, and I just had to pay $50 to transfer it into my name. So I had a towing service. So I called the towing service, 
and he sets it up and he's coming in a half hour. And I'm, the anxiety level is dropping a little bit. And now I'm thinking, am I going to even get, how do I get down to the church? And I realized, oh, okay, I've got the Lincoln. And I said, okay, I can drive the Lincoln down. And then I'm going through my phone because I'm going to contact my client. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just going to take the pressure off and cancel my client and the one after that and reschedule them. They do it to me. I can, you know. And um, now I'm breathing. And I look down and I've got an email from Subaru telling me, this is a Subaru commercial, um, telling me what to look for that would have caused. They, they get a notice. Diagnosis. Yeah, they're diagnosing it. And they're telling me what to look for to go to look at the, the gas cap. So I, and I had gotten gas at Costco and I closed it and I could tell it didn't quite click, but I couldn't get it to click. So I work on that a couple of times, and that still didn't make a difference. So within a half hour, and I could, so now, and my, so I had, my clients were great, no problem. See you on Thursday. I, you know, so I had time to come get down here, thinking when Kevin comes down, we can go down. And I, and also in the back of my mind, and there's a, there's a verse in Solomon, in Song yeah. of Psalms. What was that? Do you remember Catch it? the little foxes. Yeah, the... the little foxes that destroy the harvest, the vineyards. Yeah. Right? So here I was set for the day, you know, and I was, everything was going great. And I'm going, okay. So that's, I make, so Kevin comes home. We're, we're set. We're going to come down together, and, and we do that. At 5 o'clock, I call, and Subaru calls me and tells me, you can pick the car up. What it was, they had to tighten something in the gas cap, and it was just the gas cap. And the good news, the well, bad news, good news, because everything's com computerized, the system won't work if there's one thing that isn't functioning properly, and it can cause a lot of damage, I guess. I'm not sure what the... What won't the, let you drive it. Yeah, they won't let me drive it. So, lesson learned, no charge, come pick it up tomorrow morning. So the next morning, now you want to take it from yeah, here, or I'll do I get here. to? Uh, you, you can enter in, you just stay here, okay? I'll pick up from here, okay. right? Huh? What's, we're well, working on that one. We're working on that we're one. We're working on it. So she's calling Subaru, and to my mind, it's a like, wait a minute, what's this going to cost us? Right, he was all of A tow truck, a, a, a right. car hauler's just coming down my driveway, got to go all the way to Santa Cruz, and is our uh, package going to cover all that? So that's in my mind, that Pennywise kind of a thing. And then, huh? Uh, no, 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 it's just like, it's always, it's always a present thing. And so don't forget... Don't forget the gas gauge, because with all of this stuff, it would be easy to just space right. it out. And, and I want to I want to just uh, say that during as I was going through this process, I'm I'm talking to the Lord about this. You know, we're having a little conversation about this. You know, there I go, you know, stepping out. And that's what happens when you step out. You get that <clears throat> target in the, on your back. And, and but I was like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, kowtow, you know. I sh it, was, it was okay that I stepped out. I was, I was, be I was in the word, and you know, and we're we're having this conversation, and that's when every time we would talk, I got the next step that brought my anxiety down. And I think you had talked about that last week. We were, we were talking about. Oh, uh, talked about worry. Yeah, the the, the whole thing or, about uh, worry or, and and worry how about a little any little thing. You know, right. we have to take every thought okay. captive. So, um, I'm I'm now now balls kind of back in my court. I'm I'm going to drive actually the escape sir, so we can take the the escape down. And uh, but I don't want to forget because it would be real easy to get busy down here, drive past the gas station, and find out that we <laughs> were in trouble. And so I want to add one thing to what you said. 
about when you're stepping out, you can get punched. And I remember that Donalyn, who was a, a Christian therapist that we went to, um, was saying, and there's a, there's a second punch. There's a return punch. You get knocked this way, and you're trying to recover, and then you think, okay, all right. And then one comes this way. And so you want to be conscious of that because you might think, oh, boy, good, that's behind me. But you're not necessarily out of the woods yet because the enemy, if we're talking in these terms, is relentless. He's, he's be happy to knock you off balance and have you lower your guard and come back at you again. And so that's what's happening in this uh, this story. We I go to get, get gasoline. It's four seventy nine a gallon. What's the difference there? That's all, that's almost thirty cents a gallon difference for however much it's going to take to fill it up. You know, I can go over to Marshalls and buy a burrito. With no, no maybe no. not, huh? <laughs> maybe I could go to Starbucks. <laughs> so, so we go over there, and there's a lady in front of us in the car, and she sees Nancy with the little with with Abby, and and she's looking through the window and, and seems to be quite interested. And so, um, we're talking. yeah, yeah, she she comes around and, and wants to to see and he's closer. To be filling yeah, the yeah, I've already put my card in, and I've I've got the the thing in, and and I ask her what her name is, and it turns out it's a lady that I've talked with before from Granite from Granite Lock, Rock, I, Eileen, uh, whatever, and um. And so we get engaged in the conversation, and I'm just not paying any attention to the, the pump. And now it's time to go, and it should have had plenty of time to fill up, and so put it, hang it up, and, and uh, drive off. No, 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 it's not that And one. then, and he looks at me and goes, my gosh, 98 bucks. Yeah, it was 98 bucks that was reading on the thing. And, and I'm thinking, I've never put that bucks. kind of money in the car. But it's one of those things like when you sign a big contract, you just sign it. You don't read it all. You just sign it. You just read it. You know, you no, just you sign should. off. Anybody else do that? Yeah. You, know, you read all that fine print? Every time you download an app, it's a good idea. It's a, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I just acknowledge that I don't. And it's kind of the same way. $98, that's not right. But there were other things in our mind. We were just leaving a conversation. And so I drove off. Nancy took the car and went over to get um, the yeah, mail. The mail, and I came back, and, and I look, and I'm going, it's still reading empty. And I said, Kevin, you better check the fuse. The fuse. You, your, yeah. Maybe your fuse is broken or something. Yeah. We're you know? still in a befuddled mode. Yeah. This day has started out yeah, befuddled. Yeah, right, because I'm, I'm still trying to catch up. And I'm thinking, I don't have time to do that now. That'll be a downstream project. And so the um, idea then is... Coming back to this, keep this in mind, penny wise, pound foolish. Have I done anything here that has been pound foolish? I don't think so. Not it yet. was it was smart to say yeah. It was smart to um uh, save that money and then we got to visit with someone. Penny wise and pound foolish, I find this. It describes the act of concentrating so hard on economizing in small matters that one misses the opportunity to save or gain a large amount of money. The other thing for Kevin in larger matters that's very important is his time. So right along with saving money is the value that he puts on his time. So now it's can, can I go to the next morning make move this along? Well, um, why don't you come over here and see where we're at? <laughs> okay. Yes. <Yeah. So, laughs> all right. A penny wise, pound foolish, or is it just frugal? Is it just plain being, is it pound foolish, or is it just being frugal? And so I'm going to read this quote from a, a fella. He says, being frugal doesn't mean slashing your spending or depriving yourself of things that you enjoy. I, I kind of tip the, the scale on that one and, and just do without. It means knowing the value of a dollar and making every effort to spend it wisely. Now, okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, question. Uh, after. Question. So you pay um, $98 we'll and get we'll empty. We'll get that. Yeah. Maybe my question's the same. Okay, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. We'll oh, get yeah, there. We'll, we'll do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll do it. Right, right, right. So then. So it's Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. We're going to head out. We're going to head out and go to. He's, he's going to drop me off at news. Subaru yeah. so I can pick up my car. Good news. Come and get her. 
Yeah, good, good news. It makes you out. happy, right? Hi ho, hi ho, off to Subaru we go. Right? Okay. Now, this is an important, an important point. I think it's very biblical. Um, <laughs> we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. Very Calvinistic, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, a man plans his ways, but the Lord might have a different plan. And so here we are. We throw the dice. We're going to go off, and we're gonna, we're, we've got our gas. We're going to go to um, Subaru. And, uh, and so here we go. We're, we're get, coming down the long grade of... Um, uh, uh, Rio del Mar, are you coming yeah, down? No, before on... that, the, now I can't say it. Larkin Valley grade, we're coming, Buena Vista grade, we're coming down that long grade. And... Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, the car stops. And I'm thinking, oh, remember I told you about all the lights on my dashboard being on a couple of weeks ago? They're still on. And I'm thinking, you know, this one, I was penny wise pound foolish i didn't get my car in to be fixed and that's what's going on here and so it takes a little while and, you know so even though i walk through the valley of the shadow it looks like i'm up a creek with a pat without a paddle i'm in, i'm walking through the the valley of this is bad news and then the thought and the words came to me from a message brought just a few weeks ago on worry um it's the uh, uh Bob Marley's song, don't worry about a thing because every little thing's going to be all right. Now, that means nothing unless you want to put it to work and say, is this going to be all right? Is this something for me to worry about? Well, I'm thinking, it's fortunately, I got a good run on from coming down the hill, but can I get off the freeway or am I going to have to pull over on the side? That's not great. And I managed to coast all the way up to the top of the off-ramp there at Rio Del Mar, and I don't stop. <laughs> hoping no cars are coming through. And I'm coasting down. I just need to get around the corner because we know what that spot is. And this time the red light changes and there's a car honking at me and honks again when it passes me. And, I, and it's, it's, oh, well, you know, I needed to do this. Yeah. The car and took it down the exit ramp, which, you know, you remember the, the slide background that I used uh, for the 23rd Psalm last week? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your, uh, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This was the backdrop. And if you look at the moon up in the corner, it's rather skull-like, right? And so you get the sense that this valley of death, where there, it's a dangerous place. And so this comes to mind, and um, the slide that followed was actually in my head last week, it's one I superimposed some things on, where we see that the representation of God the Father is right there, the valley is the backdrop, he's right there. And if you recall, it also struck me that what I'm going through is, it's not such a big valley, it's just, there's a sidewalk, I'm on the sidewalk, I'm thinking it's the deep dark valley and all, all is lost and woe is me, and there's a crack in the sidewalk. That's the valley. And so he plants a flower. There's got to be something good coming out of this. Mistakes happen. Come on up here. No, come on up here, because you're going you're gonna to be out of sync. Come on up here. All right. So what do you do, Nancy? What do you do? We're off to the side of the road. I call Tyson. Yeah. And I just give him an SOS, you know, be prepared. You may have to bring us gas. Yeah, and he's not even answering it. And he was, he, and, and he says, well, and I told him what had happened. We'd gone to the gas station. He's on the phone with the fire station, mar the fire market, yeah. telling them you've got something wrong with your pump because I paid $98 and tank the, the tank is empty. And <laughs> Tyson. This guy hardly speaks English. And, and he says, well, you have to talk to my boss. So. And it's just a comedy of errors. And so um, Tyson says, well, Mom, why don't you check online and see if there's a charge on your credit card? If there's a charge for $98, yeah, you, that you've got a problem. So I check, and of course, there's no charge. So now I'm going, OK. He was so busy talking, and he was in a hurry. So we didn't, he, he didn't even put any gas in the car. Duh. 
I call Subaru, and I'm and they are just. I'm telling you, these guys are wonderful. I said, "You've got my car. I'm my husband took our our old car to bring me in to pick it up, and we're stuck on the side of the road. It's got no gas. Can someone come and pick us up? Yes, no problem. Yeah, we had to, we had to wait. We're about... both on the, we're both on the phone yeah. working together trying to find a solution to it. And does anyone have a AAA card? Have a triple A card? I do that. <laughs> <laughs> that. It won't help you. See this card. This card says right down here that it's good until March fourteenth, twenty twenty four. And now this card was gifted to us, and it occurs to me after the fact that I was informed that they would no longer be renewing it, but it's too late. I'm calling. I'm calling AAA, and, and you, you do it all kind of automated without talking to a person, and they tell you, well, you, it tells you you can hang up when you finish this last screen. Well, I didn't like to do that because another screen came up that wanted my name and all the information, the, the number, and that makes sense to me. And then a person came on. I like when I can talk to a person. Yeah, and I tell the person, hey, I'm, I, I need to be towed. My, here's my AAA card number. I don't want to just wait for... A, a truck to show up eventually. I don't want to know what I should expect. We go over the card number and she says, I'm sorry, sir, that card is expired. Well, wait a minute. It says 2024. She says, yeah, well, we could say that, but not have been renewed. And so there we are. Now we got, we have that on top of it. I think we're coming into that second or third punch in all of this. Yeah, but so Subaru came, picked us up. Now Morrissey's having work done. Morrissey exit is having work done. So it takes us like 20, 25 minutes just to get from Rio del Mar to Capitola. Now I know that in his head, you know how in a taxi you've got the meter running? Time. Minutes. It wasn't in my head. Time. Like I didn't plan on going out to right. doing this at all. Right. So he's going. His his meter's running. So we get to Subaru, and of course that's another twenty minutes or so. Where's your where's your ticket? We we'll go. Get we we'll get there. Okay, so yeah. we go to get the car. Yeah, you can pause. I can stop. Yeah. Okay. okay. And because I want to insert this song. I want to insert this song. She's pointing at the clock. I want to insert this song. It's Waymaker. And so in all of this, we need to be conscious that the King of our hearts is also a waymaker who makes a way for us. There we go. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, 
That is who you are. You are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never, never stop. stop. You, you never, never stop working. working. You never, never stop. Jesus, you are. Way make a miracle work. A promise keep to light in the dark depths. My God, that is who you are. Way make a miracle work. Promise keep the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are. Penny wise, pound foolish. That's what we need to try to evaluate here. So while we're waiting for the tow truck, Nancy throws this penny wise, pound foolish at me. My son had, had proposed it a week earlier because trying to save a few nickels on gas. And it bothers me because I can't really see the connection here. I'm thinking, I'm just doing the best I can to make, keep the wheels turning. And then she says this, she says, maybe you should talk to God about this. Yeah, yeah, maybe I should talk to God about this. And so, uh, God's been talking to me. And he's pointing out a lot of things that are um, good in and of themselves, but need to be moderated. That we might learn one thing and we will say, uh, I, I wasn't raised that way. Well, you, you still got some growing to do. You left home before you were done growing. And, um, and so I would encourage everybody to, to have a, a measure of sensitivity when somebody says something and you don't want to hear it. Maybe they're telling you something you need to know. And maybe you should uh, ask God about it. Talk to God about it. There's the um, passage that Nancy referenced. Catch for us the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. They look cute enough, you know. The, the ones that are going to mess, with, mess you up can look cute enough and nice enough, but uh, not be good. Penny wise and pound foolish or just frugal, that's the question. Where am I going? Why do you ask? Yeah, I got it, I got it. So at what point do these things become, do these virtues become an albatross around your neck? Does that happen? Does it become an albatross? Nancy came to find out it was something as simple as a gas cap that could keep her from uh, being able to do what she needed to do. I'm gonna pass up a couple of, couple of slides here. Uh-huh, uh uh-huh, yeah, those should be done. We, we got a repeat going here, I'll just move right past. Now, what's wrong with this picture? We're at Subaru. She goes in the office to finish up the business there. You can't see it in this picture, but maybe in this one you can see the number hanging on our mirror in the window. I'm saying, is that our car? <laughs> Hello. Really, is this superstitious or what? And so Nancy's thought about the little foxes and you should pray about this and all of that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, we do have, we do have a, a very active enemy who wants to disable us and he might punch us this way and we think we're done, but he's gonna come back the other way. And we still gotta hang on to these, these, uh, this deeper reality that he's for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? All. It doesn't, that's right, he's for us. And, and there can be lots of little things that fail in a broken world with the, uh, you know, the, everything that's broken, even if it's close to new. And so that's that. 
we're going to um, receive the offering here at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't fill it up. And that's why it was $98 in a car that should take about 45 trucks. So, uh, I'd put my card in. You, yeah, you know, and that's that's becoming a very real that's becoming a very real lesson for me, because the environment I grew up in, you you went full speed all the time and hoped that while Dad was taking a nap after the the little noon lunch meal that I could go out and play and do the things I'd been thinking of all day long. And so I've always been in a race with time. I've always been frugal. And these things, yeah, there, there can be, there's good qualities there. You don't taste, waste time, you don't waste money, but it can be taken to excess. And so I even notice this little dog is a teacher to me because I can look at my kids that I was too busy to spend time with, the way you spend time with Heath and, and, your, and your little guys. Uh, Leith. Leith. Leith, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get down at their level and, and, and do that, and I don't have time to cuddle with the dog or play, you know? And so there's, just, I do. I know, I know. So, but it's some major things that have to change. And so, yeah, I, I want to get this because there's not that many years left, and I don't want to miss, miss the best part of them all. Two dollars and thirty cents. <laughs> well, I had to go with you anyway, so you could bring the car back. Yeah, right. But I was to Rio Del Mar for you to get in your car. I had to go to my class. I had a. I was taking a ceramic class last month, so I had work I had to do on Sunday. Otherwise, it'd be too hard, and I wouldn't be able to do it. So he had to come with me to Capitola and sit two more hours with me while I did my work and then go all the way back. So he, we figured it was, he saved seven cents an hour or something like that. And I'm saying, is your time yeah. worth more? Is that all you're worth? <laughs> and okay. I think the light bulb is going to come on. It, it's, it's dim. It's, it's starting to glow a little bit. It's flickering. Yeah. Of course. Because we're thinking, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my mind? I can't remember anything. And I did that the other day. I went all the way into town to do the banking for the church and myself. It's good. And I had a grocery list. And one of the items on the grocery list is something that my grandson particularly likes. I get back home and it's and I forgot it. The very thing. And I'm going, are you losing your mind? And it's no. I'm like you. I'm moving so fast, checking these things off the list that need to be done before my grandson gets there that I out and out miss it and had yeah. to make a whole nother trip mm -hmm. to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So this frugality right. with time, time or and, whatever yeah. may tend to lead us to believe that we're entering the, the part of our life when our memory isn't holding, when it's really, we're moving too That's fast. one of the signs, yeah. Yeah, we're moving too fast. So it'd be to our <clears throat> comfort mm -hmm. and our sanity. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. yeah. Even my voice, my speech, yeah. everything. Slow down. Breathe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You know what? Mo what motivate? What moves us? And and what our defense mechanisms are? And all the things that we do. It, it in situations like this, it it has to do with anxiety and and really understanding that and dealing with the anxiety. Then you don't have the circumstances. 
All right. And that's quite often I am and not thinking. Invariably, I knock over something on the kitchen sink. No, I'm kidding. Always. And I'm thinking, Diana, and like, slow down, you yeah. move too fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's just. Kicking down the cobblestones. Looking for love and feeling groovy. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. He's a baby boomer. Hey, let's let's receive the offering here. Lord, I just pray that this has landed somewhere for for our your people and that um whatever it is, it might not be the same things, but if there's some way that you want to uh keep us growing and um conforming to the likeness of your son. And so, God, would you help us, each one of us, to be conscious. And sometimes what you want us to look at is things we don't like. And, uh, but help us to recognize where those, those common similarities are so that we can, uh, we can grow and be better people and more appreciated, more valuable, and better lovers. In Jesus' name. You go ahead and... and uh, Make the make the rounds. We'll call that a blessed offering. Does anyone know this song? We're looking at a day in the life. That's what we've been looking at. Um, we'll, we'll have a closing song here. And um, I think we started with it, but it's a, a good and an easy, uh, simple song. It's called, How Great Thou Art. <clears throat> oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when pride shall come with shouts of acclamation.
and take me home. Joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. This is a prayer that's at the end of the Lectio 365, and it's a special Sabbath prayer. I use it as a closing benediction for you. Uh, may this day bring Sabbath rest to your heart and your home. May God's image in you be restored and your imagining, imagination in God be restoried. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May you know grace to embrace your own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed you and his spirit lead you into the week and into the life to come. Lord, that's a, that's a good prayer for your people, and I just ask your blessing with it as we go our way. In Jesus' name.